want to focus again, you, you talked a little bit about ethnography and understanding your audience and asking why. So my question for you is, consumer research has been out there for a long time. Anyone watching Mad Men knows that Don Draper was always thinking about, you know, and Peggy was thinking about, you know, what's the problem? What are they trying to solve to yeah. create the advertising? And then you're talking about the way teams are set up. Was there a perhaps a bifurcation of how traditional consumer research and R&D were done, or how did it, because one was happening in consumer research, advertising was being created with consumer in mind. Is it, is it a blurring of the lines of where the research needs to start earlier with the product development, or? I, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. I, I think there's a, we could play out, um, you know, potentially some, some examples, right? If, if you start with Silicon Valley, mm -hmm. and you look at how products have been developed in, and, and I'm, I'm going to use the word products even though, back up one step on this, right? Okay. Pine and Gilmore have written uh, a lot about the experience economy um, in which they argue that, that, that industry has evolved from extracting commodities to making goods to delivering services to staging customer experiences as sort of the means by which they're capturing, creating and capturing value in the market. And they argue that there's another phase, which is guiding customer transformations. And my favorite example of that is Khan Academy. So the organization that puts education online, Sal Khan started. Um, he tells this great story about a guy who um, had gone to high school, done very badly in high school, and um, got a college degree in music, played saxophone for a while, but said, you know, I really don't want to do that for a living. I'd rather be a computer programmer, but then I need a computer science degree, and um, for that I need math, and I was really bad at math in high school, and so um, what do I do? And he went on Khan Academy, and he said, you know, there isn't a human being in the world I could have paid enough to answer the same question 20 times. But I could watch those con videos 20 times if that's what it took. And he did that, and he learned math, and he got into university, he got a computer science degree, and he works as a... So this notion of guiding transformations is important in the answer to your question. Mm -hmm. If I'm just making goods, then I can go out and see what kind of shampoo should I put in your shower, and should it have the bottom open or the top open to squirt it out, and what's the best way to get the rest of it out of the container. And, and I can do fine doing that, right? But if I'm going to guide a transformation, I have to actually much more deeply understand people in their lives. So there's, there's that that big picture around your question, which is we've moved away from cranking out things that look the same. So if you look at consumer products companies, they have historically been pretty focused on the numbers as opposed to on, so they know, take the Huggies example we just talked about, they know how many people buy Huggies. They know if the moms or the dads buy them. They know what sizes they buy. They know, right? I mean, they can, but, but they haven't actually talked with customers, or they had not at the time, talked with customers to figure out, oh, that toilet training thing? And in fact, their response to toilet training was, oh, that, that emotional stuff? We don't do that, right? So there's, in the consumer products world, they kind of were stuck in that making, um, making goods space. In Silicon Valley, where it's it was, you know, historically been very technology driven, so Hewlett Packard, for example, where I worked, they made oscilloscopes and voltmeters and signal analysis devices. It, as far as I'm concerned, used for doorstops. I don't know what you do with any of this. But, but so, so the idea was that they were making instruments that would go on, that would be used by them. So if I'm an engineer in a lab at Hewlett Packard, I make an instrument that the, the engineer sitting next to me would use. So that was called the next bench syndrome. They had somebody sitting. So then when HP started to make printers or computers or calculators, that next bench thing didn't work anymore. Mm -hmm. 
they had to figure out how you go out and talk to normal people who don't know as much about technology as the people who were designing all those other devices. And so Silicon Valley has historically had very much a, what I call a technology push agenda. And there's still some amount of that, right? Ooh, I can do this cool new thing. Certainly somebody will want it, mm -hmm. as opposed to how do I actually deeply understand the marketplace in a different way and, and meet the needs of that market. So that's, I think, in answer to your question, why things have evolved over time.